Hey guys, this is Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today I've got my stick out. But don't worry, I'm not Harvey Weinstein. I'm not going to make you touch it. But before we start having some fun today, and you guys do know that if we got the stick out, we're going to play with something that's going to have the potential to hurt somebody. We're going to be safe. But before we get to that, one thing I want to talk about really quick, if you'll just get, let me get off topic for a minute, is uh, there's this really cool thing that goes on where I work. And, you know, I'm not going to try to get into how y'all feel about cops, white cops, not cops. This isn't the right form for that. But most of you know that that's what I do do for a day job is I've been in law enforcement for a very, very long time. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. And if you'll look, I haven't shaved in about four days. I know it doesn't look like that, but it's really been four days. I just, I know that there's 14-year-olds who can outgrow me on a beard. But here's the deal with this. We call this hair for the holidays, and we raise money. And that money is going to go to give local kids here in our community a Christmas that otherwise wouldn't have one. So Kurt's going to post like somewhere down in this area, or down, I don't know how he does it. He's going to put a link to our PayPal, which will just be our email address, which will be mattgambrell or at hotmail.com for PayPal. And you'll know it's me because you'll see a spider exantic there when you go to it. If anybody want to donate, just send us something there. Put on there as a donation so I know it's not a snake payment. And even a dollar. One dollar helps. One dollar helps a ton because, you know, we're a big community. We have almost 10,000 subscribers now. By the way, you guys are awesome. Most of these videos hit a few thousand views. And if people just send a dollar, we could give a lot of kids a Christmas that otherwise wouldn't have it. And the way this works is as cops are working, they go out and they run into these families and they realize that, hey, they're in a tough spot and Christmas isn't happening for these people, they then will uh, nominate them, they'll get contacted, and if they accept, we don't force on anybody, if they accept and they get to come a day and we give that kid a budget and we have a local retailer that works with us, we take them shopping and they get to just go crazy, get what they want, and they get to have a good Christmas when they otherwise would have nothing. So if you want to help out with that, just send it to our, uh, our little our little uh, PayPal address there, and I'll show you guys what the totals are when we do get money if anybody decides to send, and we'll donate every bit of that that we get to help that cause. Question Girl's here. She's had her hand up the whole time, like a third grader. What do you want to know? Did you mean to give your personal email address, or did you mean to give the business email address? The PayPal is connected to my personal email address because it's been my PayPal for a long time, and we just started using it for business, too. And that's why you need to put a little note in there that says, like, you know, donation for hair with the holidays or cops and kids or whatever you want to call it. So, on to the day's video, which today we have a rattlesnake cage in need of service. So that's what we're going to do. This water dish is bad, we need to clean it, need to water it, just do some general clean of the cage. It's time to service it. So we're going to work with Reaper. We also got to do our other ones. We'll probably cram those into one video, depending on how long it gets. Before we start that, and I know I get crap because I don't just get right into the snake, and I always talk about a little safety first, but I'm going to continue to do that. As always, we got our tools ready to go, both hooks and tongs. I have other people here to help me if I need. And you guys have seen some of my little furry creatures. I got a little pet bunny I love. I got two cats living in the house and two dogs. And they're all locked up because it's not worth risking them and putting the snake at risk from one of them being curious or something else and having a bad thing happen. So we prevent that by locking them, securing them in their own room while we work these animals. You got to always kind of think about those little things. So without further ado, let's get to plan with Mr. Reaper. Now, again, you guys will probably realize the camera angles aren't always going to be the best on this because I'm not going to think about where Kurt is with the camera. I'm more going to think about where I am and me being safe. So, we'll open that with the tool like we always do. And he's in the hide, which does make this just a little bit more difficult. Hopefully I can coax him out of there. Come on. Come on. Hey, that's what I want you to do. <laughs> they never cooperate the way you want them to. But he did come out of the hide. We'll start working from this side now. Again, patience is a big key. And now we should be successful. Again, just patience. Come on, buddy. There we go. All right, there we go, guys. We have one rattlesnake, which we'll just drop him in there. Keep him in there. And again, we always put that lid on. Over here, keeping our fingers out of the strike range and just sliding that pin in there. 
done and done. We're going to pause this video, fix that cage, get him back in there. We'll show you that, and then we'll go work red. And you'll see a major difference in his attitude and red's attitude. So get ready for that. Tons of fun. All right, be right back. All right, so poop's all clean, water dish clean, water dish back in there. It's time to put the snake back in. Uh, you probably noticed in the edit that this is now open, and all the stuff that's on here is off. The reason for that is I've always found that Reaper is a little easier to load from the top. I don't know why, but he is. So I prefer to do it that way. Works better for him, works better for me. All right, here we go. You can see the hook will take those tops, those clips off, and the hook usually should pop right in there. And there he is, in all his glory. Now, this is a snake that if I was ever going to freehand a venomous snake, this would be the one. He calms down pretty easy. He will start right on the minute it touches there. But I think if you work him through the hook for a while, you probably could just go with two hands. That being said, never going to do it. It's just simply not worth the risk. So if you're watching this channel, hope to see somebody freehandling rattlesnakes, you're on the wrong channel. If I did that, I would pretty sure that question girl would stick her foot down and say, no more of these in the house. That's a little more risk than she's willing for me to take. Am I right? Yeah. So we're not going to be doing that. But he is pretty calm. He'll crawl through these. Watch yourself, Kurt. He'll just pick right up on the hook and nicely go right back in. One thing, too, Probably won't make a difference if it get wet enough. But if that rattle gets wet, you will not hear it anymore. Once the rattle gets wet, it's silent. Now with this, we do the same thing. We're going to place it on the top. It's got rails that's going to slide in. We're going to keep our fingers out of the cage. Slide it there. Drop it into place. Flip the locks. Flip this. Put that back in place. Make sure we're sealed down. We are. Once that's good, we simply can put the locks back in there. And all this is for, because we do have cats and they can jump. We put that there so the cat would never be exposed. I've never had one of the cats get up there, double check all those, make things locked. But again, better safe than sorry thing. All right, and that is all for Reaper. Before we go to Red, do you have any questions about how we do Reaper? Yeah. Um, how come the light isn't on in the cage? Because the light, and we'll have the light on for red, so we get a good view of red when we do that. The reaper's light, when I set this cage up, I set it on a timer. So it has what's basically just an LED bulb, not a heat light. It's got a heat lamp that is a constant heat, the ceramic heat emitter heating the rock, so he can bask how he naturally would. He'd come out into a rocky outcrop and bask in that rock. But the light is on a 12 hour on, I think 12 hour off cycle or something close to that. So it cycles on and off on its own. I don't have control over it. We're filming a little late. Probably should have done the light, but. It's kind of too late because the light's already shut itself off to the timer and it won't come on until probably 6 in the morning. So, and I have found with wild caught snakes especially that that light timing is a little more important. It works really well with this guy to help him adjust because, you know, he's one that come out during the day and come out at night. They're mostly nocturnal. They will have during the day and the rice season. They will come out during the day for breeding and things like that. So, and the forage. So anyway, the uh, day-night cycle works really well. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, how long would a rattlesnake like this typically live in captivity? Captivity is a crapshoot because he's wild caught. Uh, I know he came with no parasite load because I had a check when he sent fecal smears to be done. You know, and he eats well, he does well. I don't know how old he was when he came to us. It's hard to judge by size because size can be deceptive depending on how much he was eating in the wild, how you know readily available prey was for him. But. I mean, if he was a young snake, like I think he was, there's no reason he can't go 10 or 15 years in captivity. You know, I think that would be quite possible. So that's kind of what we're at on that. All right, one more or are you done? Really no, I more. have a couple more. So what do you mean by a low parasite load? No, a no parasite load. We <laughs> took his poop and we had his poop ran through a veterinarian and they didn't find any parasites in his poop. So if he was like full of parasites, he'd be crapping them out. They'd have shown that up, and we'd have had to have him treated for parasites. So he has a—he didn't have any parasite load when he pulled it from the wild. And he shouldn't get one in the house. That's just his mind at ease because he was going to be around other animals. So. But why did that affect the lifespan in captivity? Because if he was full of parasites, we didn't deal with it. The parasites could eventually like leach him, drive nutrition, and kill him and shorten his life. So 
All right, on to red. All right, on to red. All right, guys, we're in here, and now it's time to work uh, Kali, who Kurt always calls Big Red. You can see her in here. She's got the poop in the shed there. It's time to clean that cage out, to clean her water dish, do all the same thing. Uh, her attitude is a little bit different than Reaper's. You know, Reaper's got probably the meaner sound and badass name, but this one has the attitude to go with it, where Reaper doesn't. One thing in here is going to be kind of new. It's a little bit tighter area to work in. It was locked. I took the lock off previous to starting the filming, but we do keep this cage locked as well. All right, we're going to get started. Kurt, you're going to have to, like, mm -hmm. probably go back up and use Zoom so I have my tools. And, uh, yeah. And what makes this a little bit more sketchy now is we just added these two new racks that we're setting up. And that has really depleted the space I have to work with. So we're going to see how this goes. I think we're going to be okay because I still have room to manipulate my hook. But, hey, we'll see. Knowing the snake, I'm going to just a little bit closer. Okay. Let's see how you're going to be with the hook today. Hook with her is not a very good proposition always, as you can see. Slow down. One thing about her is when the hook doesn't go well, she'll often get so amped up that she will begin to bite herself. I can't let that happen. The problem is she doesn't just crawl through it. Now she's going to start that sideways moving crap, which is going to be a tool switch time. And that's why you got to keep calm around here, too. And again, we're not going to clamp her hard. And did you see her jump the top of that? That's why we always talk about where your fingers go. Because my fingers are in the wrong spot with this snake. She would make me pay. But just like that. Clamp it. Clamp it. Woo! Oh! That was fun. All right. Uh, you can see her attitude is totally different. This is a snake that you should never, ever, 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 ever try to free handle. She'll make your like, hands raw. But I do love her. She's unique. She's just kind of cranky. The nice thing is she eats every time I put in food, so I can deal with cranky. All right. We're going to stop this really quick, clean that up, and then we'll get her back in there. We'll see you in a few minutes. She's still biting. And we're back. It was instant for you, but not for us. We got the cage clean, water dish clean, and more water in there. We've gone through the sand, got all the big poop chunks out. And you heard that. I don't know if that camera picked it up, but she just literally tried to bite me. The difference in her and Reaper is immense. She hasn't stopped rattling since we started doing this, where Reaper was quiet the whole time we were cleaning. Uh, I know the snake, so I know that when it's like this, there's, we're going to get it going right to the tongue. So that's how it's going to be. But we're going to go ahead and put her back now. Again, use the tool to bring this up. And then, oh, I know, I know. As you can see, she is just so fired up. And we're going to also support her. Wait with the hook, so hey, 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 hey. Yeah. All right, we'll go more in the middle with you. And the reason we're letting her go is because we were that far back, or forward, she can hurt herself, which I don't want her to do. Come on, nope. Nope. There we go. Hey, don't go in there. No. There you go. That way. No. Come on, calm down. 
Okay, now she's probably going to pull her body in there on her own. If that's the hope. And we're done. So simple, right? And again, most of that drama is because I don't want her to get hurt or me to get hurt. So we're using two tools for her weight. Not tamping down, not cracking her. as violent as she's going to be, we're going to have to control her because she wasn't going to let herself be controlled on the hook. And I wasn't going to spend 25 minutes trying to calm her down, let her run through it where we can hook and hand her and put her back in. And the reason that is, is knowing the snake. When you know your animals, I know that if I try to do that, because I've tried to do that before, she'll strike so wildly that she'll actually bite. And you saw her do it a few times, but she'll actually bite, stick, and hold it and venomate herself and not just kind of that little behavior you're seeing. So... When she's in her mood, we go straight to the, the tool to better control her. Um, it's about the only way you can deal with her. All right, question girl, any questions? Is this typical? Of what? Her. Of her? Yes, this is pretty typical. She's been one of my crankier Western Diamondbacks I've ever had. I want to put the lock on so we don't forget. However, <laughs> I know, sweetie, I know. She actually, believe it or not, has gotten better sometimes. So yeah, this is pretty typical. And I would say this is not atypical for a Western. She's probably on the uh, more feisty side of Westerns I've dealt with. There's a lot of Westerns I play with that you can hook and hand. You can hook and hand them all day long and they'll be fine with that. You know, you just got to watch them at first to make sure they're going to be in the mood to play. She never is. That's the difference. She just... Always is going to take that defensive posture, and I just now realized that with all that good fun work, I forgot to put her antlers back in there. So guess what I get to do now? Put her antlers back in there. Now, when you make a mistake, and that's on me, because I should have checked that first, so again, I'm human, I screwed that up. What we'll simply do to make that right is she needs the antlers in there, and she needs some of her cover stuff. We'll just go ahead and open the cage. We're going to take her tools, and again, we are going to put her stuff in there with our tools, not our hands. So, that's going to be how that's going to work. Are you going to put the antlers down or facing up? Usually they're facing down, but they'll go whatever way they go. Is there a certain benefit to them facing down or facing Not really. Up? It's just something to make the environment not quite as open as it currently sits. To give her something to not climb on per se, but help to with sheds. help with sheds. Hold it smaller. Perfect. And also to uh, kind of feel a little bit of security in if she wants it. This is one I took out of there for a while because we had a, a prey item get in there. But I think it looks neat, so I'm going to get it back to her. I could drop that in. And that is kind of how you can manipulate in the cage using your tools. Now again, the best practice would be to take your tool if we can. This side of the glass doesn't move as easy as that slide. But catch it. <laughs> as much as we can. We can also do it from here safely. So we're good. So now we are back in a happy world. That was my mistake you got to see. Any more questions? Question girl. She says no. All right, guys. Kurt, you got any questions before I go? If you do get bit, what's the first thing you do? Uh, well, the first thing that you do if you get bit is, and there's, there's a couple things you do need to be thinking about. One, uh, get right with whoever you think your maker is. So me and, me and G's going have a conversation just to make sure. You're, and then calm yourself down. You know, take a few deep breaths. One, see, are you in pain? If you're in pain, you're envenomated. Okay, if, you, if you've got a burning sensation, you're envenomated. 
take a deep breath. You're probably not going to die. It is not what the movies make it look like, okay? It's not. I promise you. Is it bad? Yes. Is it a medical emergency? Absolutely. Does that mean you're going to die right now? No. So you need to calm yourself down, get control of your breathing, you know, whatever you need to do that, however you do that, just control your body, and then take yourself to a hospital. If you keep one of these, you should already kind of have that plan. Like, I have that plan, it's posted, I'm going to make my phone call, I know where I'm going to go. I always have two people when I work a rattlesnake, that way I have somebody to drive me to the hospital because I'm 15 minutes away. Uh, the reason for that is if I get bit in the hand or somewhere like that, and my hand is swollen up and not working well and driving becomes a problem, I don't want that. So have that, have that plan, what am I going to do beforehand? Because then you can focus on that, calm yourself down. The reason to calm yourself down is, is the quicker that your body starts moving and the more overdrive it goes and the faster you go and the more excited you get, just the worse it's going to make the situation. So if you can calm yourself down, you know, not to quote Aaron Rodgers because you all know I... I hate the Packers, but R-E-L-A-X, relax, and then get yourself to medical attention. So that would be the biggest suggestion I have. Anything else, Kurt? No. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hey, you even got to see me screw something up. I forgot to put the cage furniture back in, but it is there now, and uh, we'll see you again real soon.